Once again, welcome to the second edition of News Tonight. It's me, Michael Jadon Lukumwa, with Elizabeth Nakakoni, and this is what we have for you. President Yuri Kaguda Museveni has received a special message this afternoon from his Central African Republic counterpart, Faustin Akenjo Todera. Uh, the special envoy, Claude Romaux Birao, uh, who is both the Minister of National Defense and Army Reconstruction for the Central African Republic, delivered the message to President Museveni this evening at State House in Debe. During the meeting, the special envoy conveyed warm greetings from the President of Central African Republic to the President of Uganda, the government, and the people of Uganda in general. They also discussed matters of mutual interest between Uganda and the Central African Republic, specifically focusing on defense, cooperation, and trade linkages. The special envoy was accompanied by the outgoing Minister of Defense and Veterinary Affairs, Honorable Vincent Sempija, and the incoming Minister, Honorable of both Max and Jacob, among other senior military officers and government officials. Recently appointed ministers of state have committed to serve after taking over from their predecessors. Balam Barugahara, who was nominated Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, committed to mobilize all the youth against poverty. This was shortly after he appeared before the Parliamentary Appointments Committee that was chaired by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Nita Among. They were six in number nominated to various state ministerial posts. They were to appear before the Parliamentary Appointments Committee for vetting. They have all turned up. Nominated Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs, Balam Varugahara, arrived first. We don't have to skill people, everyone to do skilling of making bricks and the chapata and etc. Each sub-region of Uganda has its core. Karamoja has minerals, so the youth of Karamoja should be skilled in mining. Bunyoro has oil, our youth in the Bunyoro should do more of oil and gas. Then the youth in Uganda are good coffee farmers. So we need to do that, but for me to achieve that as a minister, I will reach out to the young people in their sub-regions, hear from them, and then, in an inch better, they give proposals of what we need to do. He pledged to rally youth in the fight against poverty and mobilize youthful political opponents to come on board. One of my key immediate steps I have to take is to convince the head of state and the attorney general and the DPP to pardon all the NUP supporters, to drop all the charges on the NUP supporters, the NUP, NUP youth, so that those youth can be incorporated in society, be rehabilitated, be skilled, be funded, so that they put energy on the development of the country, other than burning streets and burning buildings. Lilian Abe and Fiona Nyamtoro, nominated to the Disaster Preparedness and Energy Ministry Dockets, had similar pledges. I am one person who does not breathe conflict. If there is disagreement on principle, it will be handled. But one thing I can guarantee you is that I am not going into that ministry for any petty fight. I'm going there 
to perform my duties and to deliver services as assigned by my boss. So I think Uganda is good to go when it comes to petroleum, but also there are very many other minerals that we need to explore and see how best Ugandans as the citizens and stakeholders can benefit from the existence of these minerals. Florence Nambozo seemed ready to take on the Karamoja Affairs docket. The challenges in Karamoja that uh, have prevailed on for a long time. I don't stand in the place of God to say I'm the one going to remove them. But one thing that I know is that I must be having a healing ingredient in me. The reason I've been appointed to go to Karamoja. Outgoing Presidential Private Secretary, Dr. Kenneth Omona, also affirms commitment to service. Ah, very interesting. I mean, some people I've, I've ever seen or known before, so, uh, well, nothing so new in Parliament here, I think. I've been here before. Do we see you come back to Parliament in the next election? No, I'm not going to present the next election. I'll be here in Parliament as an ex-official. I'm not going to run for Parliament in 2006. The ministerial vetting exercise seems to have been successful with candidates waiting to take off. Henry Okrut, UBC. Security agencies in Uganda have tightened vigilance of VIPs and sensitive installations amidst the reemergency of ADF terror threats within the country. The BIFTAB security is based on the confirmed intelligence that ADF remnants entered Uganda with suspected intentions of targeting VIPs and critical government installations. PDF and other sister security agencies' intelligence confirmed the resurgence of ADF terrorists through the western border of Eastern Congo. This has fostered the enhancement of border patrols and stringent checks for those entering and exiting the country. Our joint security agencies of police, UPDF, in coordination with the joint intelligence components of CMI, ISO, Crime Intelligence, are actively monitoring our external borderline with DRC uh, following the infiltration into the country of um, uh, a few notorious ADF uh, rebel leaders. The Police Directorate of Counterterrorism has revamped the services towards protecting VIPs and sensitive installations. The preliminary security intelligence indicates that these ADF remnants are targeting prominent people in government. In particular, we would like to I caution all our security personnel uh, to be very alert, and uh, including those who are manning VIP installations, uh, protecting politicians, and uh, we want to warn uh, any of those persons who will be found harboring or collaborating with these uh, uh, remnants of ADF rebels to know that they will suffer uh, consequences. Intelligence teams have been initiated to counter any re-establishment of ADF cells in different communities. Uh, but we want to assure Ugandans that, uh, like we've always done, we are doing everything within our means to locate these remnants of ADF who filtered into the country uh, with the objective of disrupting their mobility and uh, proliferation within the country. The memorable attacks of the ADF were made on the central police station where people lost lives and the other one was that of the twin bombing at Parliamentary Avenue. Meanwhile, police registered four deaths in mines and quarries. These occurred in mines of Kasanda, Namutumba and Nachifuma and all are attributed to illegal mining without safety precautions. There are no safeguards in form of rescue equipment, electricity, constant supply of oxygen, there are no lifeguards, the walls have fractures from blastings and uh, easily collapse when there is a vibration uh, or from weights uh, above. Police Minerals Protection Unit is instructed to reinforce existing mining laws and regulations to save the lives of miners. Patricia Nandago and Abdunasil Luwama for UBC. 
Efforts are underway by locals and marine authorities to recover the bodies of two women who drowned in Lake Bunyonyi in southwestern Uganda. Uh, the incident occurred on Sunday, the 24th of March, when their dugout canoe capsized amidst heavy drains accompanied by strong winds and hailstorms. The rough conditions also claimed the life of an infant whose body was floating on the lake. Lake Bunyonyi, with an estimated depth of 900 meters, that is 3,000 feet, and 29 islands, holds a significant place in Africa's lake systems. However, for many residents, relying on agriculture cross the waters daily to access their farmlands. But two women and an infant died last Sunday, March 24th, due to harsh weather conditions. The deceased have been identified as Naturinda Rachel, Kesande Lehonelia, and five month old baby. At the scene of the incident, Stephen Kabarebe recounted hearing cries for hope as it rained. He rushed and saw an overturning canoe. Attempts to rescue the victims were hindered by rough waters, and Kabarebe could not save the victims. Chigezi sub-region police spokesperson Eli Mate acknowledged the incident and assured ongoing efforts by marine police and locals in the search operation. The chairman of the Murandi village, Elidad Kalanzi, confirmed that of the five individuals aboard the canoe to survive. Georgia Simwe, a concerned resident, appealed to the government for support in providing life jackets to families living around the lake. It is estimated by locals living around the lake that close to 40 people perish from this lake annually. The video showing the cut fingers of the deceased Susan Magara crying for help from her relatives to have her released from the kidnappers has been displayed to court. In the video, Magara, who was eye-masked, and crying for help to be released by the kidnappers. Uh, it was presented to court by Kanene Enoch, an expert in cyber and digital forensics. Judge Alex Ajiji of High Court Criminal Division is presiding over the murder case of Susan Magara, the case against eight suspects. The 18th prosecution witness was Kanene Enoch a forensic expert and cyber analyst attached to directorate of services at Nagulu Police. Kanene told court that he got a requisition from Detective ASP Isaac Sembera to do forensic analysis on exhibits in Susan Magara's case. I do recognize them. They bear the lab number. This was the first exhibit as the unique identifier of every exhibit. The exhibits included phones for the deceased Susan Magara, her parents, and phones which were used by the kidnappers, directing her father where to find her daughter Susan Magara. Kanene was also given a flash disk containing a video which showed a lady crying for help. <laughs> He later discovered that this was Susan Magara, showing the two cut fingers. My lord, also this SD contained two images, some images. These were some of the images found on that image, on that memory card, and this image, my lord. Kanene showed court the photos of the alleged money in dollars, which was given to the kidnappers to have Susan Magara released. The interpret it was taken they aligned the money, arranged the money on bed sheets. There are a number of images reflecting different money and different serial numbers. These images were also found to have been shared on WhatsApp to other numbers. The witness also disclosed to court the phone audio recordings between the parents and the kidnappers requesting for money and directing them to find their daughter Susan Magara. The call data showing the kidnappers communicating before, during and after the kidnap of Susan Magara was showed to court. This was the last call it made. It was in communication with a number registered in the names of Yusuf Mohino. The call data also displayed the names in which the SIM cards were registered in, among others, Nagai Anit, 
na Mbuya Rehema Isaac Makubuya and Kawoya John When you look at this ID this is the serial number of Susanne's phone and the next history that was captured it was captured in a different phone and it was inserted in this phone well at Namasuba Susan Magala's number SIM card was still in this mobile phone and now it had changed the BTS the location Meanwhile, witness Shamira Nawasa, who arrested the accused the Hajara Nakandi, also testified. Judge Alex Ajaj adjourned the case to 23rd April 2024 for further hearing. Deborah Nama Monde, UBC News. Fred! Massive. Friendly Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just take a polite loan of 200 you to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank teller. Why hustle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're sorting it. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The Government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the Chief Administrative Officers, City Mayors, Resident City Commissioners, City Clerks, City and Division Councillors, Wards and LC Chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the National Population and Housing Census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1 how many we are 2 where we are 3 how we are living 4 what we own and 5 where we access services from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua Fort Porto Gulu Hoima Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755 342 128 or 0773 342 128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSOS office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. UBC News tonight. The Parliamentary Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, chaired by West Budama South MP Emmanuel Utala, has concluded an oversight tour of the solar powered water supply and irrigation project sites in central and western Uganda. The project by the Ministry of Water and Environment is financed by the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. It was approved by the 10th Parliament of Uganda.
Voluntary oversight visit is the second follow-up of the solar-powered water supply and irrigation project to the one that occurred early in 2023, eastern and northern Uganda. This time, the signs in the central and western region of the country show tremendous progress in the infrastructure setup and utilization. Most of us know that uh, this area falls under Masaka Ankore Dry Corridor. So the area is always dry. We, have, we receive rains just for a short period of time. Sonko, a passion fruit and tomato grower in Dutente, earns about 15 million shillings on tomatoes alone in a week, but used to spend 35% of that to run the farm. Each solar system costs an average of between 600 million and 750 million shillings to set up. So it's not only this amount of money. It may be a billion at the end of the day. Or it yeah. may be 1.5 at the end of the day. How does it have an impact? Do we have to have to go for these mini ones that are small or something that covers the whole village? So the rationale is a solar-powered pump station like this one behind me, built by Nexus Green, should supply a group of farmers. For example, the farm that this particular one is serving is about 12 acres wide. That is still small. If you imagine 94,000 square miles that constitute Uganda's land, you still find that it will take us a long time to reach out to many people and make them benefit from this project. Government through the Ministry of Water and Environment contracted Nexus Green an international solar company operating in Uganda to develop 687 of such sites across the country. These are supposed to be pilot systems, for lack of a better word. Uh, that's why the scope is a little bit smaller. You go, if you're irrigation, it's about uh, five hectares uh, per scheme. But they are supposed to be model uh, uh, irrigation systems. And this uh, one is to, of course, demonstrate that with increased coverage, with increased irrigation, according to the president's vision, you can actually quadruple your production. Currently, 161 sites are still under construction, 367 are at design stage, 351 sites have failed at different stages of design due to poor quality or inadequate water. 50 sites are completed and undergoing commissioning, but still face potential risks. Land ownership being a potential risk to this project because these people are saying they are Bibanja holders. And being a Chibanja holder sometimes ends with a, a casual relationship with the landlord. But you need to secure your tenancy by having proper document and your Chibanja surveyed. The sites visited by this committee include Lutente Irrigation Scheme in Kalungu East, Mpumude Irrigation Scheme in Chazanga, Bugo Irrigation Scheme and Mitiebili Irrigation Scheme in Chotera, Chamuhanga Water Supply System in Bushenyi, and Orutoma Irrigation Scheme in Chiruhura District. Waduloma Kanol for UBC Business in Western Uganda. Key players in the insolvency practice who are judicial officers, magistrates and registrars have trained in critical insolvency practical aspects. This was at the 7th Annual Insolvency Conference in Kampala. The training ensures that the insolvency system in Uganda keeps up with the involving global dynamic insolvency best practices. The two-day training from 25th to the 26th of March on insolvency points out the role of judicial officers in handling matters of insolvency. Insolvency conference is a gathering of different professionals in the insolvency space. We have uh, the uh, judiciary, the judicial officers uh, today uh, who are comprised of uh, the justices of uh, the Supreme Court and Court of Appeal, the judges of the High Court, the registrars and magistrates. Uh, the reason why we have this uh, 
annual conference. This is the seventh uh, annual conference. Is to have uh, a discussion on what is emerging in the space of insolvency, business rescue, corporate restructuring, to share experiences in, in the courts, uh, to share different case scenarios uh, across uh, the uh, borders. I must congratulate the Registrar General, official receiver, for the reforms so far achieved in the execution of her mandate as the regulator of insolvency law and practice in Uganda. Let's give her. We are talking about uh, <coughs> the reforms that have taken place. Justice Kibede here was uh, my classmate, and we were studying bankruptcy law as a small section of commercial law. And the uh, most famous thing we knew about uh, bankruptcy law was uh, the provision of keeping house. And uh, as you can tell, keeping house is a negative aspect of uh, insolvency. There was need to acquaint in mechanisms of insolvency to attract investment in Uganda. Note that uh, insolvency law may not be uniform everywhere, and that means that some of the business people that are operating in Uganda and operating in different countries may be facing different insolvency laws. So our people in the judiciary are going to look into all those issues. And for us as URSB, we, because we are dealing with the, the companies direct, we have the experience and we've got the feedback. In the meantime, an efficient insolvency system could only be achieved if there is continued promotion of an understanding of the innovative, global, dynamic insolvency. I again want to thank you and for their current way uh, working with the white ball to link us with them in order to benefit uh, our judicial visas through the Judicial Training Institute. Thank you so much for that. Also, you are listening. This year's insolvency conference has been on the theme Leveraging Innovative Insolvency Practices for Business Sustainability. Mariana Wari and Anit Sana for UBC. Jaguar Tony Raymond, West Management Project Coordinator, led by Msinji Poultry, wants Ugandan poultry farmers to use solar dryers and biodigesters to increase on their income, generate electricity, biogas, and serve the environment. He was speaking at a training session for poultry farmers to use solar dryers and biodigesters at St. Pado Pio Leisure Center in Chebando. Rainfall is the most important climatic variable for planning and management of rain-fed agriculture. Unlike before, the onset of rain in the north is yet to come. With the continuation of anthropogenic activities and global warming, it is expected that the pattern could continue to change. Irrigation has been advised as one of the mitigating strategies. In Kwania, the production department is promoting the use of small-scale irrigation system where farmers contribute 25 percent and government funds the remaining 75 percent to install the on-farm solar powered irrigation system. The solar pumps have capacity of uh, above 40 meters of uh, head so they have capacity of uh, transporting water to 50 meters uh, in the distance. The district production and marketing officer noted that production has been low for the last six years due to adverse effects of climate change. But also we are receiving less rain than what than what we have been receiving. We therefore uh, should have irrigation so that farmers do farming throughout instead of having two seasons. And the two seasons has not come now for for about for about six years now. We are only having a good harvest in one season. The U gift funded program was launched in Guania to improve farmers' livelihoods. We are expecting over twenty nine farmers in Guania to benefit from this. It's not about politics, it's not about an RM issue. It's all for all of us. NRM is a very wide party. NRM loves everybody and wants it to benefit. Beneficiaries express hope of increased production. I've been struggling with uh, this uh, water can to water my, my, my crop. But uh, I was getting a lot of challenges about it because 
the water can is very small, like only nine liters. It has come at the right time, so I'm sure of producing cab cabbages and uh, tomatoes at least two and a half acres this season. The system can man 2.5 acres and is expected to benefit mainly smallholder farmers interested to transition from subsistence to commercial agriculture. Farmers are expected to co-fund by providing 25% of the total cost as government to the Ministry of Agriculture covers the 75%. Ediolua, UBC News. Yeah, that is our story about uh, Kwania District promotion small-scale irrigation schemes due to unstable rainfall in the area that is affecting agricultural productivity. We now go on to another story related to uh, environment and how uh, it comes about here. The Indian Association has announced the dispatch of the third batch of heart surgery patients. Uh, let us first have the environment story before we go to this health one. Solar dryers and biodigesters are used to produce cooking gas, electricity which is used by farmers as well as benefits of the dry manure, thus making money. These dryers and biodigesters have been of a great importance in conserving the environment. And this is in line with minimizing the expenditures on charcoal, minimizing the usage of charcoal by poultry farmers in brooding and cooking in their homes. When you minimize the usage of charcoal, it means you're not promoting deforestation in our country. According to the project coordinator, waste management project, Jagwe Tony Raymond says, Msingi poultry farmers can use solar dryers and biodigesters to prevent air pollution. And the solar dryers help in minimizing air pollution. Air pollution, it comes with a smell Air pollution is when your poultry farm is smelling for the community and creating discomfort even for you as the owner. Agriculture specialist Ochan Pasi trained farmers on using chicken dropouts to increase production, generate income and conserve the environment. <laughs> Of a solar dryer, one is they reduce the, the odor smell, which is irritation to the community. Second, is they are a source of manure to crop farmers, and then thirdly, is they are a source of income. From Gayaza, beneficiary Agnes Katumba received a free solar dryer and biodigester and has benefited from the project. So, really, I'm going to increase from my income both in chicken. And in selling, even I, I rear pigs. So one one person told me you can even if you have dried it so well, you can mix it in pig feeds. So that's what also I'm going to benefit. Project of waste management is coordinated from Kampala, Mukono, and Wakiso. The Indian Association has announced the dispatch of the third batch of heart surgery patients to Namar Health Hospital in Chennai, India. Within three months, 11 patients have been provided with this life-saving opportunity. The first two batches were generously supported by the Indian Association in collaboration with the Uganda Airlines. Expanding their outreach, uh, the association has forged a partnership with the Rotary Club of Kampala, Sese Island. The main reason why we are sending them to India you may surprise and uh, you may ask this question in your mind. This is mainly because one, expense-wise we compared, it's better to have it done there because bringing a doctor or special equipment from India to here costing us more than what we have uh, tabulated and therefore we have left with no option but to take these patients to India. So in India also, uh, we do in different regions. The first six kids were done it at uh, Mumbai, and this batch is going to Chennai. Chennai, mainly we, they are going to Chennai, which is in southern part of India. The reason for sending them to Chennai is that the Rotary International has a tie-up with one of the hospitals in Chennai, 
where these patients are going to uh, have the surgery done. We wanted to contribute to the so many children who are waiting for surgery at Uganda Heart Institute. Even the Indian Association has a long list of children who need surgery and some of these cannot afford the surgeries. So as Rotary we are doing something to see how, how can we take some children for surgery. And then luckily enough we realize the Indian Association is also doing the same thing. So in this we agreed to partner. Have a chance to see their fifth birthday. Many of these children, if, they're not, if they don't get that intervention, they don't live to see their fifth birthday. Allow me at this point to uh, thank the government of Uganda under the leadership of our own His Excellency uh, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, who happens to be the chair of our ruling party, that is the NRM, for the good stewardship, for making sure that uh, uh, we have peace and it is the peace that we are all enjoying on. So I want to thank His Excellency for ensuring that there is peace and stability to enable investments to grow in Uganda, from which people, uh, including the members of the Indian Association of Uganda, can get some income uh, from which to support the social causes. Okasai Opolot has embraced his reappointment reaffirming dedication to advancing the objectives of the Ministry of Energy. President Museveni has reappointed Okasai Opolot as Minister of State for Energy. In his new term, the minister is to focus on economic development and gender equality. I would wish to thank His Excellency for actually recognizing and trusting the people in the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. The two attaining minister, full ministerial positions and then retaining me here. That is a trust that has actually been shown to us as a sector. Minister Okasai has stressed to focus on harnessing Uganda's abundant energy and mineral resources for the nation's advancement. In line with the various policies that we have, as energy sector, we are always mindful of the position of a woman in the ministry. Those who have heard me talk at times actually take statistics. How many women do I have, say, in renewable energy? Relatedly, the Energy Ministry Permanent Secretary, Batebe Irene Paulin, at belated International Women's Day celebrations at the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development Headquarters emphasized the importance of skilling women. We are working to set up mineral markets because we are aware that the women are not getting value for their product. They work so hard, but also the men. They work so hard, but in between there, there are several middlemen. And we must ensure that they can access the market directly without going through middlemen. Continue to put in place policies to ensure that that is supported beyond the ministry's efforts. Dr. Maggie Kigozi, an entrepreneur, urged employees to exhibit the sentiment of integrity in their line of duty. Integrity. Integrity. Don't lose your job because of some small mishaps with somebody offering you one million shillings and you lose a job that will feed you and your family for the next 20 years. Corruption, integrity, absolutely key. Um, and Okasai Opolotti's reappointment signifies a continuation of the government's commitment to fostering economic development and gender equality. Irene Faith Nantongo, Mary Namokose, UBC News. Let's take a short break and return. We have more. Keep it with us.
Ebisira vyo kusa ya bana masomero. Tebite kwa kuka rubiriza na katono. Eno kusimba nyiriri mpamfu. Kenu karipa kenu kabiduka. Simanya kuzunga na banka siripsi. Ha <laughs> Kati osumu lo kusasula sukuru fisi zomu ana wo. Atina okola na evi lalantoko. Kusimu ye yomu ngalo. Isukula changu nyo. Nika unyizi sita. Emu kaga tanu. Sita. Munana noti hash. Ukumerele evi kula giridua. Ubuku zise apu ya MTN momo. Hati kati okula churu waliru. MTN mobile money Uganda limited. Erunga miswa bank nkuru ya Uganda. is the month of film magic as the Uganda Communications Commission brings you the regional film competition. Experience the excitement across Uganda. Northern region in Moroto from the 4th to the 8th of March. Eastern region in Jinja from the 11th to the 15th of March. Central region in Mitiana from the 18th to the 22nd of March. Western region in Kasese from the 24th to the 27th of March. Come and watch some of the best films made by your very own creative minds on their way to stardom. Follow and support the different nominees as they battle for top honors in each regional film competition. The winners will walk away with prestigious awards and exciting prizes. The regional film competition is powered by the Uganda Communications Commission. Increasing diversity of Ugandan content. TB kills approximately 30 people daily and 247 Ugandans fall ill of TB disease every day. TB has killed dreams and families. We all deserve a chance in life to hustle smile. We all deserve a chance to dream and be the best version of ourselves. It is preventable and curable. Know your status. TB testing, treatment and all TB related services are free in all government hospitals and accredited private health centers. Busitema University informs the general public and all its students who qualified for conferment of degrees and award of diplomas and certificates that the university will hold its 14th graduation ceremony on Thursday, 28th March 2024. The function will start at 8 a.m. at Busitema campus in Busia district. The provisional graduation list is available on the university website www busitima at ac.ug. This graduation ceremony will be broadcast live on UBC TV starting at 10 a.m. UBC Business News Tonight. Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries officials and members of the Crop Life Uganda have held an industry meeting whose objective is to streamline the agrochemicals sector. Crop protection products are in the spotlight due to health concerns. According to experts, some of the products used by Ugandan farmers are classified carcinogenic, meaning they are highly hazardous. Uganda is an agrarian country with more than 70% of its population dependent on agriculture for food and for income. With a rapidly growing population, commercial farmers are increasingly utilizing agrochemicals to improve yields and combat pests. 
Uganda's pesticides and other agrochemicals industry is dominated by imports of international standards. Although some of the agrochemicals are very effective in the farms, the products are linked to health challenges such as the rise in cancer cases. One, there are growing concerns of cancer and other related issues, environmental factors, which we are trying to address. One of the core values that we follow is stewardship. We are looking at ways of ensuring that we are phasing out the products that are outlive their usefulness or are becoming more hazardous and introducing alternative products that are more user-friendly, that are healthy according to the global standards. But also most importantly is that uh, all the members, when they come together, we should be able to identify how to work with the farmers, the environmentalists, the agricultural inspectors to ensure that whatever we put on the market is actually health for human uh, health and environmental uh, factors. I mean environment and the environment as, as a whole. CropLife Uganda, a national association of manufacturers, importers and suppliers of crop protection products, have met with Ministry of Agriculture to brainstorm on their next course of action. The chemicals entering through the border, we've said the ministry is intensifying this. You've also had a, a beer in Woofing which is coming. Uh, to focus on uh, basically making sure that uh, we are frugal in our, in our regulatory work. At the end of the day, the importers or the distributors and, and the regulator as Minister of Agriculture, we are working towards a common person who is the farmer. Polar borders can be a problem because with borders which are manned by our regulators and of course with UNDS and then URA, we try our best to control and actually we control. But now when it comes to forest borders, that's where the challenge is. So I think the way forward is also trying to see that even those plus borders uh, will get means of stationing their staff, something that is also addressed. Demand of crop protection products have grown exponentially because of increased, more intensive agricultural production and the emergence of new pests and diseases. These products that we are trading in are the ones that farmers use to grow the crops that are exported to Europe. Now. It is very important that we be compliant with the global standards so that our products are not rejected in Europe. Dennis Igor and Juman Samba for UBC News. Uganda has introduced a groundbreaking solution to address customer concerns regarding internet utilization. UCC's Mike Messages Mwesege cited Airtel's proactive approach to data usage concerns being commendable, showing a commitment to customer satisfaction. The telecom giant launched the data usage manager on the My Airtel app, allowing users to monitor data usage by application. The innovation, launched by Airtel Uganda's managing director, aims to empower customers with the tools for better data management. This innovative tool gives you a clear picture of exactly how your data is being used, by which apps, and all the details are available. You can now take control and make sure your data is being used for the things that matter most to you. We believe this is a game changer for Airtel Uganda mobile data users. The data usage manager is just one way we are committed to providing you with the tools and information you need to get the most out of your Airtel Uganda experience. The digital landscape's growth calls for accountability as seen in the 7 million increase in the mobile internet subscriptions. Oh, for us at the Commission, it is commitment that Airtel Uganda is listening to its customers and uh, the public outcry that has been ongoing, especially about uh, data usage. I'm sure you've seen all of our social media users constantly complain about their data going and uh, without any explanation on how it has been used. Uh, this is a step in the right direction and I believe it will go a long way of uh, improving um, the customer experience as well as the customer journey on Airtel Uganda's uh, services and platform. So we congratulate you and uh, we thank you for listening to customers and listening to their cries and responding in that direction. Airtel Uganda's data usage manager sets a new standard in customer empowerment. Robert Katamba, Sandra Kahunde, UBC News. The Chief Executive Officer Stanbic Uganda Holdings Limited and UCO has unveiled remarkable achievements attributing their success to collective efforts and strategic alignment. JUCO was attending a stakeholders meeting for the financial year 2023 annual results stakeholders briefing 
of Stanbic Uganda Holdings Limited and also bidding farewell to for another assignment in Kampala. Our people. Stanbic Uganda Holdings Limited CEO and Yuko stressed that the achievement resulted from collective efforts by all, including regulators. We owe everything and these results and everything else to our customers. Second and equally important are our regulators. Right? Our regulators are very, very supportive and important and they've continued to allow us to give us a license to operate, but also to give us the guidelines within which we operate. And we want to, to, to that to thank Bank of Uganda for the work they've done with us, the wonderful partnership. But also what they do at a macro level. Uganda is one of the few countries that have managed to, to control inflation globally. Right? Uganda's monetary policy has been sound and the results of, theirs, of, the, of those sound micro, uh, monetary policies are reflected in our inflation number, which is one of the lowest in Africa and, and which gives us a stable macroeconomic environment. And Yuko emphasized the bank's commitment to supporting economic growth and development initiatives within Uganda. We have made 1 trillion 194 billion as revenue. Of that, 584, bi 584 billion yes, is spent in operating costs. Those operating costs are largely our staff, who are about five, 252 billion on staff costs. And the balance of that is spent on expenses. Majority of those expenses are here in Uganda. We have a policy. We procure from Ugandan uh, entrepreneurs as much as possible. Right? The only things we buy from our, as part of our operating cost out of Uganda are technology and expertise, because those you can't find here. Like I was saying, Microsoft, there's no Microsoft in Uganda, right? We have to go and get the technology out of Uganda. So that's a big part of what we spend. She reassured continued commitment and performance from Stanbic Uganda Holdings Limited despite her departure. This would have been possible without you. And last but certainly not least is the rest of the Blue family, which is not here. I know that we will have time in the course of this week for me to say a proper goodbye. But thank you. Thank you very much. It's been an incredible journey, and you have done everything to enrich it for me. So thank you. The chief executive, Stanbic Holdings Limited, Francis Karuhanga, highlighted the increase in deposits, reflecting customers' trust in Stanbic for their financial needs. Also proud to be the number one trade bank with a market share close to 40% um, as we support the economy. Also proud that we, we are a conduit through which people can access the market, whether you want to invest in us or you want to access the money market, we play a role in that respect. So that Kaye, UBC News. I'm Kaylee with the Very Special Weather Report. From up there to down here, everything is crazy. If we don't listen to scientists, things are going to be even crazier when I grow up. Let's look at the forecast for 2050. Heat waves will affect 94% of children, making playing outside a thing of the past. Extreme droughts will wipe out wheat crops, killing the one food my brother eats, bread. And disasters will cost taxpayers almost $6 trillion. My parents hate taxes. Of course, all of this is caused by a blanket of heat-trapping pollution in the atmosphere that we could just, like, not put up there. But don't worry, there's still a chance of clear skies. Right now, clean energy systems are moving in from the east to the west, creating tons of coal jobs. And solar prices have dropped lower than oil and gas. Going to the satellite, it looks like a high-pressure system of grown-ups could still move in and protect kids from an avalanche of really bad stuff. Some gusty political winds ahead, but they're no match for the power of Hurricane Felicia. That's my mom. We'll keep you posted as we track if adults stop wasting time and fix this totally solvable problem. Because it's not just a weather report to us. It's our future.
Saba Gabon Tusi and Saba Dumatete have been crowned champions of the 2024 Mutesa Football and Netball Cup tournaments at Mahogola Sasa Grounds. The Magombola football and netball tournaments in Maogola codenamed Mutesa Cup have climaxed with Saba Gabon Tusi edging Saba Walimijuara 2-1 in the football final. Here we are at the climax of the Gombola football competitions in Maogola County and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the county leadership for all the support and also to thank His Majesty the Kabaka for the opportunity he has offered to the talents in Maogola. And we are also very thankful to all the leadership and everyone who has participated. In netball, Saba Dumatete defeated Musari Webitakuli 17 to 9. The finals were graced by Buganda Kingdom's Minister for Sports, Youth and Arts, OHT Robert Siruanga, who appreciated the organization levels. The Magombola Gabuganda sports competition that aims at identifying talent at grassroots level is in the 18 counties and is planned to end by 6th April 2024. I urge all other sub-counties still in the race to make sure that we have all our games played and to climax the final by the 6th of April this month because the 7th will be the Kabaka birthday run. I take this opportunity to thank everyone who has offered any type of help to all teams that now in Maogola they have seen their talents, they now have a talent to reckon in the Masaza competition come 2024. The next final in the Magombola Gabuganda sports competition is expected next Saturday when the Kaima Cup for Maogota climaxes at Impiji Police Grounds. Meanwhile, the Buganda Kingdom has confirmed that the 50th edition of the Bikabia Baganda football and netball tournaments start on April 20th with netball and football to start after 27th April. Mamba Gabunga and Butiko will be the opening games in both netball and football. Thank you so much for watching. That is all we had for you tonight. Michael Jadandokomwa is my name with Elizabeth Nakakun and the whole team. Wish you the best of the night. Let's leave you with uh, Nantes uh, Juliet here that has the weather update. The latest weather forecast from the Weather Center. My name is Juliet Nantes. Most parts of the country had light showers in the morning, though some had sunny intervals. When we take a look at the satellite imagery today, it shows that the rain belt has shifted to the central of Africa, our country inclusive, and this means we are going to be receiving rains in various areas. As we prepare for your Tuesday in the morning, we expect Central to wake up with light showers in most areas. Eastern, we expect to wake up with sunny intervals in most areas. The Western stretch, we expect to wake up with isolated showers in most areas. And in North, we expect sunny intervals to dominate most areas. Later on in the afternoon, temperatures are expected to rise to 28 in central to 29 with isolated showers. Eastern, we expect a maximum of 30 to 33 with light showers. The western stretch, we expect Kasese to have a maximum of 30, Masindi a maximum of 28, and Kabale Highlands, we expect a maximum of 24 with isolated showers in most areas. In the north, we expect a maximum of 33 in most areas with light showers. Elsewhere, Nairobi, we expect a maximum of 27 with thunder showers. Dubai, we expect a maximum of 27 with rain. Cairo, we expect a maximum of 27 with sunny intervals. And London, we expect a maximum of 11. That's all we had for you from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Inspiring Uganda.